Hi, I'm Vacha Vorperian. This is the second video of my course, How to Solve Circuits the Right Way, Once and for All. I'd like to call it the Joys of Circuit Analysis. These lectures are based on my book, Fast Analytical Techniques in Electrical and Electronic Circuits, published by Cambridge University Press, and is available online from any bookseller. In this video, I will introduce you to painless and joyful circuit analysis. In the last example of my previous video, I showed you that when you use nodal analysis to determine the input resistance of this bridge circuit, you obtain this answer here, which is the ratio of two determinants. When you go through the tedious algebra of expanding these determinants, you get a gigantic meaningless answer. And as I said, that is how stuff happens. In the next few slides, I'm going to show you four simple steps on how to determine this input resistance almost by inspection. Let us see. Four steps to painless analysis of a simple bridge circuit. So we wanted to determine the input resistance for this bridge circuit. You look at it and you cannot determine it by inspection simply because it is a bridge connection. You can't use voltage dividers or Thevenin equivalents or Norton equivalents just because it is a bridge circuit. It's hard to determine it by inspection. Any one of these elements here is causing trouble. So let us see how we're going to crack this down. Step one. Take out the element that is causing you pain. In this bridge circuit, the bridge resistance RB is certainly one such element, this guy here. So why don't you take it out? You can take it out as an open or a short. How about if we take it out as an open circuit? There it goes. Now, when I look at the input here, I can determine the resistance by inspection. I can see that. I have R1 in series with R3, which is in parallel with R2 plus R4. So the input resistance is R1 plus R3 in parallel with R2 plus R4 with Rb infinity. I can call this partial credit answer. Well, it is partial answer because one of the elements of the circuit is missing. Well, let's go to step two. Step two, now I have a two port network, my original input port and port B where I took the element out. Now I'm going to determine the resistance looking back into the circuit from port B while the input port is short circuited. I call that script super B. Super B indicates that I'm looking into port B and a script indicates the fact that the condition on the input port is a short circuit. I can write this resistance by inspection. If I recognize that this here, input short, is the same as a short between this point and that point, then I can see that R1 is really in parallel with R3, and R2 is in parallel with R4. And the two together are in series. So script RB is equal to R1 parallel R3, plus R2 parallel R4. Step three. Now I repeat the same operation, looking back into port B and determine the resistance while the input port is an open circuit. I call this Roman super B, Roman R super B. This one I can write by inspection as well. I see that it is R1 plus R2 in parallel with R3 plus R4. So we write that down. So in these three steps, we have performed three calculations by inspection. And now we go to the fourth step to see how we can assemble the complete answer for the input resistance from these three simple calculations that we just did. Let's go to step four. Step four, we are now going to write the complete expression of the input resistance by assembling these three separate calculations according to a formula given by the extra element theorem. And here's that formula. 
We're not going to prove it right now. But here are the three separate calculations we performed. The partial credit answer, the first resistance looking back into port B with the input port short, the second resistance looking back into port B while the input port wasn't open. RB is the bridge resistance, which we took out of the circuit by letting its value go to infinity. Now you can see that the formula is plausible because if RB goes to infinity, this term drops out and this term drops out and the input resistance Rn coincides with the value of the input resistance with RB going to infinity. So the formula makes sense at least. And now we're going to substitute these three separate calculations inside this formula. And here we are. First comes in the partial credit answer. Second comes in the script R super B. And in the denominator, Roman R super B. And here you are. This is the complete expression of the input resistance. It is a meaningful expression because all the circuit elements are grouped together in series parallel combinations and as ratios compared to unity. This is an exact meaningful answer. Painless, isn't it? Let's have a discussion on this answer that we just got, the method and the answer itself. Minimum algebra. This technique has minimum algebra. In fact, in this case, there was barely an algebra done because all the three separate calculations we were able to perform just by inspection. The answer is meaningful because all the circuit elements, as I said, are grouped together nicely in series parallel combination and as ratios compared to unity. If I want to perform approximations, I can do that so easily and readily on that expression. This meaningful solution is very amenable to parametric analysis. Now that analytical answer which we just got showed the dependence of the input resistance on the value of the bridge resistor RB. If we wanted to study the dependence of the input resistance on any one of the other four resistors, we could have taken that resistor out and applied those four steps and obtained a similar answer. Of course, both answers numerically yield the same value, but it is just in a different form that brings out the sensitivity of the input resistance on that particular element. That way we can have multiple meaningful solutions, one for each resistor. We will do this shortly. Robustness. This is very important. The technique I just showed you is very robust because the answer was obtained from three short and independent calculations rather than a single long sequence of algebraic steps involving multiplication, substitution, subtraction, and what have you. If you make a mistake in the long algebraic sequence of steps required by nodal analysis, then that mistake will propagate and diffuse throughout the algebra all the way to the final answer. It's like you know what hit the fan. To correct that mistake, you will have to go through the remaining steps of that analysis until the final answer. In comparison, this technique, if you make a mistake, and everybody makes mistakes, to correct that mistake, you only have to correct portion of the answer, not the entire analysis, only a portion of your analysis. Your mistake will not propagate throughout the entire answer. It will remain confined to a portion of the answer. In that sense, this technique that I'm showing you is like modular analysis. If there is anything wrong with any one of the modules of your answer, you just take it out, fix it, and put it back in there. And I think you can appreciate that very much. And this is why I call this painless and joyful circuit analysis. Not only it's easy to perform, but if you make a mistake, it's easy to fix. 
I'm going to show you now how easy it is to approximate that answer that we had for the input resistance for typical values of resistors as shown. These are numbers I made up. And here's that expression. First, we look at this numerator value here, and we see that it is of the order of 4 over 300. In the denominator, this one turns out to be of the order of 50 over 300. 4 over 300, quite clearly, is much less than 1. So I would say it's a good idea to throw it away with respect to 1. But it really depends on the accuracy that you're looking for. So, if we choose to ignore that ratio with respect to 1, this is what we get. Also, we see that we are given R1 much less than R3, and R4 is much less than R2. Likewise, R1 is much less than R2, and R4 is much less than R3. So we can certainly throw away these resistors and obtain this approximation, at which point we see that by dividing up and down by R3 parallel R2, that effectively we have R3 in parallel with R2 and in parallel with RB. And so we have reduced our input resistance to the following approximate form based on the typical values that we were given. So it is easy really to approximate a meaningful expression as opposed to one where you have a gigantic expression, the numerator containing products of three resistances at a time, and in the denominator products of two resistors at a time, a huge sum in the numerator and a huge sum in the denominator, and very hard to approximate. This one all is grouped together. You can make easy your comparisons and throw away what needs to be thrown away. Parametric analysis. Now let us suppose that we wanted to study the dependence of the input resistance on another resistor R1. Now the method that we just learned, the method of the extra element theorem, allows us to take out any resistor from the circuit to simplify it and then reinstate it according to the formula that we just learned. So in this example, we're going to take out R1 as an open circuit and apply the four steps that we just learned. And now here's the circuit with R1 taken out as infinity. In step one, we determine the input resistance with R1 infinity and we can determine that by inspection, we see that it is R2 in series with the parallel combination of R4 with RB plus R3. And we write that down. Step two. And here's step two. We go to port one and we determine the impedance looking into port one while the input port is short circuited. This is script R super one. Super 1 indicates that we're looking into port 1, and the script indicates that the input port is short. This too we can write by inspection. This long roundabout short circuit basically tells you that R2 is connected in parallel with R4. And this terminal is that very same terminal. So really we're looking between this point and that point while R2 is in parallel with R4. And that resistance also we can write just by inspection. It is simply R3 in parallel with RB, which is in series with R2 parallel R4. Next, we go to step three. Step three, we now repeat the same calculation looking into port one and determine the resistance looking back into the network while the input port is open. We can determine this as well by inspection. We see that it is R2 in series with the parallel combination of RB with the series combination of R3 and R4. And we write that down. R1 is equal to R2 plus RB in parallel with R4 plus R3. And we're done with our three steps. Next, we're going to take these three individual calculations that we perform and substitute those in the extra element theorem to get the complete expression for R in. 
And here's that substitution. Here comes the partial credit answer. Here comes script R super one. And here's Roman R super one. And here's another expression for Rn in terms of R1. This expression shows the dependence of Rn on R1 directly. When you look at this expression and you say, well, you know, I can study the dependence of Rn on R3. That's true, you can, but it's way too hard to do so because R3 is buried inside a parallel combination here, buried inside a double parallel combination here, and inside another parallel combination here, whereas R1 stands out by itself. So we can obtain five such expressions, one for each resistor, to study the dependence of R in directly on that particular resistance. And all of these answers are meaningful answers in which the elements are grouped together in series and parallel combinations and ratios in comparison to unity. In the following videos, we are going to do more examples of the bridge circuit with reactive elements in it and with dependent sources in it. And each time we will apply the extra element theorem to show you how easy it is to obtain the input resistance with hardly any algebra work done. Very little algebra. So let's go to our third video.